If I was out buying some nappies, how in the hell would I know whether those are good for nature or bad for nature? But this is, but this is the point where the government should step in and encourage labelling, Come on, surely. Tell me. Well, this particular pack of nappies happens to have a label on it which says it's better for the environment, and I suppose yeah. that the thing to do at the moment is to look for it. Look go on, right. yes, go on. If, if you're in the transition stage, you've, it's got to start with the fact that some products will be more environment friendly than others, and those are the ones you've got to look out for. As it becomes more widely available, it'll be easier for the consumer because more of those products will be available and they will be of the same Is there anybody? Price. And I understand you're also very much in favour of recycled paper. Yes, that's right. I've brought in some uh, recycled loo paper here. It sounds, uh, which <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds very worrying, I must say. <laughs> recycled loo paper. Uh, but it's actually recycled paper which is used for loo paper. And if you think, I mean, this one's um, very soft. It's, it, there's no problem in terms of you don't have to have that horrible sort of crinkly stuff that you used to have. But a lot of it uses quite a lot of recycled paper in, in it, um, but doesn't say so because they think the consumer will be put off. Um, but also people tend to say, ooh, yuck, that's sort of really horrible. But it really isn't as bad. In fact, it's a very good product in the end. It's just a question of understanding what it is. Wonderful, Julia. It's absolutely fascinating. It's great to know that we as consumers do have real power to change things for the better. Area, if you've got cans of spray here, that's one of the most uh, uh, controversial areas of all, isn't it? And are manufacturers responding? Very much so. I mean, you'll see here, we've got three different types. The issue is that a lot of aerosols contain a chemical CFCs, mm. which are destroying the, the ozone layer. And in fact, um, after a concerted campaign by environmentalists, um, consumers really are responding to that, and manufacturers in kind. So you can see that from here, we have one that is labelled CFC, um, what does it say? Does not contain CFCs, so it is ozone friendly. We've got other ones um, that are roll-ons, pump-action sprays, and quite a lot of, of quite realistic alternatives. Julia, like do you get angry? Major manufacturers are still producing goods in the sure knowledge that they are damaging the environment. Um, yes, but I think that they, they will continue to do that if people aren't actually um, buying the alternative products. And mm. I think that the most important thing is to make sure that, that people realise what, that manufacturers are only responding to their demands. So your average housewife is a very powerful political individual, really, isn't she? Yes, I mean, she, she really is um, voting every day um, with her purse. Uh, there are two areas where the price is significantly more expensive for more environment-friendly products, and that's in the detergents area and with organic produce. Um, in, in other areas, if you're looking at recycled paper, batteries that have taken out the mercury and cadmium, or absolutely key, um, products that have decreased the amount of packaging on them, the price isn't more expensive. And so it's really just a question of being aware what sort of choices you have and, and that are available and making those choices and that's what we're trying to do with Green Shopping Day. We're trying to make people more aware of the choices that are there and to show people that people who've been shopping as green consumers over the last year have had some effect because there are more products available for the green consumer around on the shelves today than there was a year ago. Um, ozone friendly aerosols. Um, I've actually found about 10 or even 20 different types of labels on products to indicate the same issue, and yet an aerosol isn't an environment-friendly product anyway. So those sort of issues are the sort of so ones that we're trying to better. highlight. A little squirt is better than a pressurised can. Um, it's, it's better to have a, a pump action or trigger spray, yeah. yes. A part of what green shopping is all about is if you understand a lot more about the particular products you're buying and how they impact on the environment, it should be raising signals in people's mind as to whether they need those products in the first place. There are particular products that people could feel that once they're aware of the impact they're making by buying them, they could decide to give them up altogether. And then, of course, there is the fact that if you're cutting down on the amount of packaging or the amount of energy or the amount of pollution caused by particular problems, um, products, then that too is cutting down on the um, impact on the environment and it is something that people are prepared and able to do. What a lot of people are unaware of is exactly how their consumer purchases affect the environment and the fact that even within uh, a normal supermarket you do have a choice and you can make a significant contribution. I mean I know I should be buying aerosols that don't have CFCs in them but how can you tell? Yes, you can see this one here says um, ozone friendly, it also says CFC free. Some of the other ones um, only say CFC free is a, a pump action spray. Um, and, and those, of course, are ozone-friendly because they don't contain the chemical. The chemical is the propellant, isn't it? That yes, that's right. The... It's, it's what's used to get the um, product out of the nozzle. And I don't think enough people know that you can actually get these products. Um, well, actually, there's a, there's, a, there's a product that's come on the market that's largely been on sale in health food stores up to now, but some of the major supermarkets are beginning to stock it. Um, and I think that because more and more people are aware that you can get biodegradable washing-up liquids and soap powders, that they're actually going to be 
widely available even through the, the sort of large manufacturers? Fine. Um, pump action um, aerosols, um, now they're available. And I find they're much more economical. They cost slightly more, but they seem to be more economical than uh, the aerosols that I was buying originally. And I think um, if people were told this, um, they would purchase them more often. Your broad response to that, Julian? Well, I think that um, it's quite encouraging that she should say that um, the pump action sprays are, are more economical because I think that's the point I've been trying to put across it's that not all environmentally products, friendly mm. products, um, <laughs> need to be more expensive. Is there a guide to what to, what to buy and what not to, what to watch out for? What do we watch out for in, in this circumstance? Um, it's very difficult to give a sort of uniform message on, on all products. I think that we would be working towards a, a sort of labelling scheme whereby things will have just environment friendly um, so that you know that they have been screened for all the process. But otherwise, it, it's quite a complicated message and we have tried to simplify it in, in our guide, giving you the sort of basic criteria of what you should be looking out for. If you point at something like this, which is a washing up liquid, it says it's biodegradable, ecolog ecologically safe. Do we believe that or is it just one manufacturer's view of what's ecologically safe? Well, at the moment, I think that there, there aren't um, any, any that we've found out that are actually abusing that particular phrase. But it's quite likely, as this becomes more of an issue, that there will be people coming on board and saying things are ecologically safe that might not be. And I think that's, that's really up to us to, to keep monitoring that. and, and to keep ahead and actually test the products to make sure they're working and that they are environmentally safe. Mm. Well, the message is loud and clear and it's Greens Week next week. We'll be listening to that one too. Thanks for joining us this morning, Julia Hales. Pleasure. And uh, Olivia will be staying.